Hello and welcome to this special presentation on my recap of Game of Thrones Season 7. I have to admit, I went into the last episode thinking that this was the last season. Somewhere along the lines, I thought I read that this was the last season. And up until this point, I was quite disappointed that they'd left so much stuff with, like, I thought one episode left. I was confused. Anyway, I've since learned that since the last uh, episode, there is another season, which I believe we have to wait until next year. Disappointment and joy all rolled into one bundle. All right, first off, let's talk about Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen. <clears throat> it has now been completely confirmed that Jon Snow is now, from my recollection, the nephew of Daenerys, Daenerys Targaryen, which has put a slight dampener on their uh, relationship. Oh, I must put a warning out that this video contains spoilers about Season 7, so if you have not watched all of Season 7, do not watch this video to prevent any disappointment. So anyway, Jon Snow is definitely one of the most uh, favoured characters in the show, which is a good thing and a bad thing for Kit Harrington because now he will be remembered solely as Jon Snow in this world and he will... I hope he doesn't, but I foresee him having difficulties getting roles in the future and trying to break away from his character of Jon Snow, which... I think he's done a really good job and a lot of people um, really like him and, and, you know, when he was stabbed in the heart, a lot of people were not very happy. Bringing him back to life made lots and lots of people happy. So, you know, Jon Snow is the kind of like the good guy in the series and I, I, I really like the way that his character has progressed. I, I really like the writing, you know, I guess it comes back to it being based off of a, a, a book, you know, which has a genuine author that has, you know, created the characters. So the way that the character has moved up to the point where he is now, where he's the king of the north, and from his understanding, he's now getting with the queen of the potential world... I think it's been really, really good. I have, I've really enjoyed his character's progression, you know, his character's growth, and I like the way that he's portrayed it. Um, Daenerys has been a force in Game of Thrones, you know, ever since her um, uh, interesting scenes from the beginning. Up until now, you know, she is the major moving one of the major moving forces in the show. So bringing the favourite character with the favourite moving force and the Queen together, um, I think they've done a pretty good job in getting them together. Um, you know, the oh, the dragons rescuing them from the Ice King. That was uh, quite epic. Um, I have to admit I really liked the way that they brought that into it and you know it all sort of ties together and and then when the ice king took down the dragon i kind of forgot at that point in time that the could become a problem but then when you saw the chains at the end you knew what was going to happen and <clears throat> at the end of season seven we saw the night king and the army of the dead simply stroll over what was left of the wall. That was uh, fairly epic. So that leads to a massive confrontation 
that you know I will hope will rival the hell home part of whichever season it was when the Night King attacked the Free Folk. Um, that was one of the big battle scenes and uh, I thought that was quite enjoyable. And, um, you know, that's going to put the, the, you know, it frees up the riders to do whatever they want. But, you know, there's going to have to be some type of battle of living versus the dead. Um, so, you know, I, the, you know, I, for some reason, thought that the season the, the, it was finished and there was no time for them to do anything and I was pretty pissed off, to be honest. Um, but now I know that there's another six or seven episodes. They've got plenty of time. They've got enough time to wrap up. I believe they've got enough time to wrap up the whole storylines and, and bring it all home, whichever way they see fit, which could lead to Cersei killing everybody. Which is possible, but I kind of doubt they'll leave the whole Game of Thrones with Cersei winning. Anyway, so that leads us to Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen. Now, kind of like a thing. And he is her nephew. From what I understand, Jon Snow's father... Rhaegar Targaryen is an older brother to Daenerys. So, you know, I thought it was Daenerys's brother that sold her into the Dothraki at the very, very beginning, but it, it doesn't seem to be that. It seems to be an older brother because the timelines don't seem to fit that well. So it seems to be an older brother. Um, you know, they were all killed off in the Robert Baratheon era war which i don't quite understand um something i'm really looking forward to though is i want to read the books but that's another story so anyway so with the confirmation of daenerys targaryen and um her newfound boyfriend that brings us back to bran the three-eyed raven which i kind of was looking forward to him getting back but him getting back seems to be a little boring until last episode, uh, was his name Samwell? Samwell come back to it, and he's a character that uh, most people love. And um, you know uh, that episode with him serving food and collecting certain things in bowls. That was a scene of a TV show that I'll never forget. And uh, you know, I don't think many people will forget that. And the way they did that was quite unique. And um, that was quite enjoyable. And so I kind of really enjoyed his character being part of the show and he touches on a few important things and, you know, he's kind of coming back into the show as well. And it seems Bran was quite happy to converse with him and talk about uh, an extremely important part of who Jon Snow is. So that tells us exactly what's going on now and it's all out in the open. So, you know, they're two characters which... I think, I think may have the biggest effect on taking down the Night King. So it's like those two are kind of like the brains of the operation. And so I kind of really want Jon Snow to get back to sort of see Bran and, and kind of use him as a tool in his fight against the Night King. So I would foresee that happening. A little disappointed that it hasn't happened yet. But now that I know that there's another seven episodes, they have enough time to do it in a way that I think will uh, make everybody quite happy. Um, so yeah, so Samuel, all right. the Lannisters. You know, as much as Jon Snow and Daenerys are part of the show, the Lannisters are by far, you know, kind of like the the opposite, the bad guys. Um, you know, Cersei, uh, I think, has done a fantastic job in, you know, keeping the Lannister tradition and the legacy going, which she has done in quite a spectacular fashion. 
um, definitely quite a spectacular fashion. And um, I think it was a bit silly for them to try and take one skeleton to show her to get a truce. You know, I think that's kind of a bit stupid. And um, if I was Queen Daenerys, I would have just burnt Cersei and her party in one go with the dragons. <laughs> That's what I would have done. I wouldn't have hesitated the second. So, um, uh, I'm sure Tyrion would have tried to save Jaime. Um, Jaime's been a great character. You know, he's kind of like the guy that you kind of you, you do you have to like Jaime Lannister, um, and you know. He did a really, really good job with his character. Oh, Brienne of Tar. How awesome has she been in the show? Um, you know, she's become a very much a fan favourite in the show. You know, absolute kick-ass warrior. And so the show, the season finishes, and it looks like Jamie's going to join Tyrion with the Queen. Um, so I kind of really hope that that happens. And I like the idea of that because then everything's out in the open. Everyone knows where they stand. And Jamie has a good chance to survive the oncoming Lannister removal. We'll put it that way, a removal. Um, so, yeah, so the Lannisters are a, a massive part of the show. And, you know, it's been an awesome ride that we've been on back and forth with them. Tyrion the Halfman, he kind of dropped off a little bit in the show in this last season. And uh, I think as the hand, he's not the best. Anyway, but, you know, he's been very much loved throughout the show and um, pretty much everyone loves him. Some more characters, Bronn of the Blackwater. Hasn't he been, you know, had some pretty awesome moments? Come on. The only man to, you know, hit a dragon with a massive crossbow bolt. Um, he took it. He didn't take down a dragon, but he gave it a good go. Um, and he's always saved everyone. And the little conversation between him and Tyrion Lannister in the last episode, you know, he's very much a fan favourite and um, I've enjoyed his character immensely in his little bits and pieces he's been in through the show. Let's see, where are we up to? Last episode, Littlefinger. Haven't we been waiting for that moment for a long time? I, I, I have to admit I like the little plays between Sansa and Arya and Littlefinger. And I did not see it coming the way that they did that. I thought Arya was going to have to fight her way out. I'm thinking, geez, this isn't going to happen. But it looked like it was. And then it just went, Sansa goes, how do you accept those charges, Littlefinger? And he's like, oh, shit. Anyway, um, you know, that was a, a really nice part of the uh, show. Um, and that comes back to Sansa being an important part of the series, but she's kind of like one of the characters that people really haven't been able to get right into. And then you've got her sister, Arya. Now, she's a character that uh, me personally, I quite liked, and I think she missed out a lot on previous seasons on kind of developing, and she was kind of shoved to the side and and you know, she'd become the, the faceless in a kind of roundabout way. And her scene with Brienne on the the practising and the sword play was uh, impressive display for us to see how far she'd come and how capable she was with sword and spear. And so she's a character which people have loved. Let's see... That's pretty much getting back to it. You've got the Hound, um, which uh, I can't don't know the character, the guy's name, but I remember watching his kind of like um, audition tapes, 
And he's just like, get stuffed. Like, F off, you know what I mean? It's just like he, he played it in such a natural way that it just worked really well. And in the last episode, you know, him walking up to his brother uh, was quite interesting. So, you know, it, there's so many avenues for the next season to go on that I'm really, really excited but disappointed I have to wait so long. So that's okay. At least we know that there's something on the horizon which is going to be potentially super awesome. So the last season was, you know, the last seven episodes have been absolutely one hell of a ride. You know, for me, it's been one of the best TV series ever. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed watching Game of Thrones, look forward to it every time it comes out. But which way is it going to go? So we have the Night King. So you would imagine that the armies of the North, Jon Snow, Daenerys Targaryen, are going to do some type of battle. Bran's the key. He has the magic power. He has the foresight. But he's a bit scared, uh, which is understandable. Um, you've got the maester, which is Samuel. Um, you know, he's the coward type guy. But, you know... Where may he t- be taken in the story? It's hard to know. Um, but, you know, I see him being pivotal. Uh, Littlefinger, out of the picture now. We don't have to worry about his uh, BS. Um, oh, how are the... um? Yeah, that's all the other stuff. But, you know, you've got all of the, the ships. You've now got a mercenary army. The, the Iron Banks Golden Gloves champion coming over. Um, he, it's going to be a pretty... It's going to get a bit messy. And, you know, I wouldn't want to be battling Cersei on the battlefield. Um, so, you know, what's going to happen... You've got Brienne being some part of it. The Hound wanting to kill his brother, which will have some part in it. Um, is Bronn and Jaime going to go side with Daenerys, the Dragon Queen? It seems that way. I don't know. It leads to many possibilities on what may happen. One thing, though going to be interesting is the look on Daenerys Targaryen's face when she sees an undead dragon and that undead dragon is now more powerful than what it was when it was alive if you recall seeing that uh, polar bear and how vicious it was that it's going to be strong it's going to be fast it's now shooting some type of blue or acid attack Blue fire? I don't know. But it's going to be pretty meaty and it's going to be pretty kick-ass and an undead dragon is not going to be easy to defeat unless you're the three-eyed raven and you can foresee the future on how you would defeat it. Anyway, that's kind of where we're at. You know, next season, what's going to happen uh, predictions, let's see. Good guys win, bad guys lose would be the general going over it. Um, someone, some major players are going to have to die. This last season hasn't been too devastating. Oh, Aya Stark and Walder Frey. That was a, uh, a very genuine piece of Game of Thrones TV architecture, theatre, where she single-handedly took them all out, you know. That was a defining moment for her character and it was kind of like an about-time type of moment. So is she 
going to be the one that kills Cersei. That is, I think, a high, a very high probability that, you know, she'll sneak in. Ooh, take Jamie's face. Or Tyrion's face. That's not a bad idea. Um, and... Oh, she could take Littlefinger's face. I don't know how well that's going to work. But she could take Littlefinger's face to get close to somebody else to take his face. That's not a bad idea. Um, we don't want it to take Jamie Lannister's face. But whose face could she take to get close enough to Cersei? She's got Littlefinger's face. Could that face get a close to another face? You want that maester guy that um, is with Cersei. Um, you know, he's been a good character, but he's been a very side, crappy sort of character. Um, yeah, the possibilities are endless to uh, where it's going to go. We do not know. Um, yeah. Wishes all the best, and I can't wait for next year's game of Thrones. <laughs>